Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm continuing my monitor engineering series, and today we're going to be talking about occlusion. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, occlusion is an effect that you get when you close your ears. So you can try this. Go ahead and start talking out loud. I know it's going to look a little bit weird to the people that are around you, but go ahead and start talking. And then as you're talking, take your fingers and plug your ears. And what you'll notice is that there is a lot more low end and a decrease in the mid upper range of your voice. So it's a little harder to understand you. And this is what's called the occlusion effect. And occlusion effect happens because we are hearing in our ears what's happening through our bones in our head. So it's actually traveling sound from our voice and vocal cords up through the bones of our head into our ear canals. And that's what's vibrating our ears. Because the main source of what we normally listen to is through our ear canals. But if those are closed, then we're just hearing what's happening through our head. And you can try this. And again, you just plug your ears. But if you're using in-ears like this, and they are non-vented in-ears like these ones, and you plug your ears, you are getting the same sense of the seclusion effect. And so if you have vented in-ears, it's still going to happen slightly, but much less than fully closed in-ears. But the downside of having vented in-ears is that there's more stage noise happening around. So this is what the occlusion effect looks like, this light gray line kind of going across here. This is what our voice sounds like to us when we are hearing our own voice in a room. However, this darker line is what actually happens with the occlusion effect when we plug our ears. And we can listen to this right now. So I have created an EQ curve on this microphone that matches my occlusion effect. So we can see that this is fairly similar, like not quite exact, but it's fairly similar to what we are hearing. And so if I talk into this microphone, hey, check, 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 check. This is what my voice sounds like to me when I plug my ears. And so this is what my voice sounds like normally. And this is what my voice sounds like when I'm plugging my ears. Now, what can be a problem with this is if you are mixing for an artist and they have their vocal microphone, the problem is they need to get that microphone raised up above the occlusion that they are hearing in their ears so they can understand their vocal the best way in their in-ear mix. And so what we can actually do is we can do an EQ curve just for this artist to counteract what the occlusion effect is doing. And so if we go ahead and look at this, we're basically just going to make an EQ curve that's the opposite of this dark gray line. So we will end up reducing some of the low end. And remember, this starts at 100 hertz, so 200, 300, 400. So that's between 3 and 400. And then there's a little bit of a boost at... 850, 900 in there, and then there's this really deep cut between two and three kilohertz. And so what I have done is I've went ahead and I'm going to load this. And so here is the EQ curve that I have done. So I would normally have a low cut in here. So what we've done is we've reduced the low end about 5 to 7 dB here, and then there is a 10 dB cut at 400 making up this thing that's happening here of this 10 to 15 dB. And then there's a slight boost in the 2.5 kilohertz range to basically make up what this is doing. And so if I grab my microphone now and I start talking into this, this now sounds in my head just like my voice sounds without my in-ears in. So if I pop my in-ears out and listen to my voice, and then put my in-ears in and listen to my voice, this is what it sounds like. So what you can use this occlusion effect for is if you have a vocalist that really needs their 
in-ears turned up with their vocal just pegged at the top and the band is very, very low, what you can use is this occlusion effect just for that vocalist. Now, you wouldn't want to share this sound with the rest of the band. So in this case, what I would do is I would take that single input from the vocalist and I would put it into two channels. I would have one channel just dedicated to that vocalist and then one channel dedicated for the band. The other benefit of doing this is you can apply some more just normal front of house mixing styles for the band vocal. For instance, adding in compression, maybe doing some EQ to it. Those type of adjustments will benefit the band because they're getting a full kind of album mix sound of the lead vocal. But then the lead vocalist is getting this monitor channel that has this EQ curve. So if I was going to do this, I have my channel one here and I can select my channel two. If I press view in the configuration and preamp section, I can actually go and change my source to be input one. And so right here now, what I can do is I can do a normal EQ curve for the rest of the band. So I can go in and reduce a little bit the low end and take a little bit of the 600 to 800 out because I really don't like that on a vocal mic. And then we can go in and add in some heavy compression. So we could go in and do some seven to one compression and we normally wouldn't want to do heavy compression on a vocal if the vocalist is hearing that same source. And the reason being is because if I grab this microphone and I start talking into this and I'm starting to hit this section right here, I'm going to end up pulling the vocal mic away so that I get quieter and then the very loudest of my vocal is going to be up here. Now notice as I keep moving this farther and farther away, what is going to end up happening is it's going to start feeding back through the PA because the lead sound engineer is going to continue raising that vocal up and up and up, and then it's going to create a feedback loop through the main system, which is one of the reasons why I don't compress the lead vocal for the lead vocal in here. I will do some slight compression. So if I move back over to my channel one, which is going to be my, my lead vocals monitor, I would end up doing some slight, maybe three to one compression and have a very heavy knee to this. And then I would not lower this very much. And so as this vocalist is in here and getting nice and loud, that's probably where I would have it. Very little compression. Because again, I'm wanting that vocalist to be able to hear that vocal in their ears the way they need to be performing. So if I add too much compression on this, they're going to back away and then that's just gonna cause this great feedback loop. We now have our occlusion EQ, anti-occlusion EQ, happening for my lead vocalist on channel one, and then channel two can just be for the band, which has nice, my nice heavy compression in here, and that can sit really nicely in the musician's ears. I hope this was helpful for you today. If you do happen to have any questions, feel free to post in the comment section down below. Also, if there is a video that you're hoping that I would make on really anything out there in the production space, please put that in the comment section down below as I'm always reading through those comments to find videos that are gonna be helpful for you. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com. Thank you so much.